God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. We are here for Bible study. I want you to share it with somebody. God bless you tonight. Come on, join in, join in. Tuesday night Bible study. Come on, we want you to share it. We want you to share it. Share it with somebody. God bless you tonight. We are here for Bible study, New Grace Tabernacle Christian Center. We want you to share it with your friends, with your family. God bless you. God bless you. Listen, we're going to start with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for your presence that's saturating every household, that's saturating every room, every phone, every tablet, every TV screen, every laptop, wherever this is being viewed, God. We pray that you get the glory wherever this is being viewed. Somebody needs a word from you tonight, God. Somebody needs encouragement from you tonight, God. I pray that you use me like never before for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to New Grace Tabernacles Bible Study. Amen. We're excited about the word of God. And as you can see, I am not in the studio, but I'm actually in the sanctuary. And uh, we've been here all day, and we've been working, and uh, our workers are, are still finishing up things here with our new stage and our new uh, pulpit platform. And I'm excited about what God is doing. It looks beautiful so far, but they're not even finished. Amen. So they'll be working throughout the week. 
And then on Friday night, we have another awesome service that we'll be having. And it's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Listen, I want to encourage you in Bible study tonight because there are so many people that are going through things that are, are dealing with so much in life, just life. It's just, you know, forget all the other stuff, just life by itself. And, and it's so much on the people of God. And I've been watching the news and so many people are in depression and that leads to suicide or suicidal thoughts or living and not being alive. Some people are alive and they're not living. And God gave me a word for you tonight. And I want you to get your family and get your friends together. Anybody you know that has been on the verge of giving up. I need you to tag them tonight. I need you to tag them on this Bible study tonight. And I'm praying that God will use me to encourage them. This Bible study is called You Can Handle It. I want you to put that on the bottom of the screen. I want you to write it. I want you to scream it in your living room, in your bedroom. You can handle it. Come on here. You can handle it. And you got to know that whatever comes your way, whatever it, whenever it seems like the enemy is running roughshod in your life, Whenever it seems like God is putting too much on you, whenever it seems like life is just too much to handle, I want to encourage you tonight that you can handle it. Amen. Anybody believe they can handle it? And, and I want to give you this scripture, 1 Corinthians. Yes, God. I love the word of God. I, I want to give you these scriptures tonight. Because somebody going to leave here encouraged. Not another person going to be leaving Bible study and leaving church with suicidal thoughts. The devil is a liar. Leaving the, the presence of the Lord with suicidal thoughts in your mind. No, 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 no. You can handle it. And I want to give you 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Thank God for our media team who's putting the scriptures up. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. And it reads like this. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So a lot of times you wonder where this scripture comes from and where the phrase come. He won't put more on you than you can bear. That's this scripture. And with every temptation, with every trial, God is faithful and he will make a way for you to get out of it. You ain't got to worry about being stuck no more. God is going to make a way for you to get out of it. God is going to make a way for you to escape it. Amen. And, and, and he says, and it starts off by saying, whatever you're going through is common. Which means what you're going through, help me Holy Ghost tonight. What you're dealing with, Sister Crystal Rollers, and I see you on here. What you're dealing with, you ain't the first one to deal with it. You ain't the last one to deal with it. You ain't the only one to deal with it. Sometimes the enemy wants to make your mind think. He wants to trick you that ain't nobody else going through but you. Ain't nobody else struggling but you. Ain't nobody else got bills but you. Ain't nobody else got heartache but you. But that's a lie. It's common to man. Which means that you ain't the only one going through it. <clears throat> and sometimes, if you see God bring your neighbor out, if you see God bring your sister out, if you see God bring your brother out, you got to know that if he did it for them, he can do it for you. That's why we got to get back to testimony service. Oh, Lord, I might have said a bad word there. 
we got to get back to testimony service because really what testimony service it was not for us to come to church and tell everybody our problems but it was for us to come to church and tell folks what God brought us through and sometimes you need to know that you ain't the only one that got a hard-headed child Oh, come here, somebody. You ain't the only one that got bills that are due. You ain't the only one that got an eviction notice on the door. You ain't the only one that been let go from a job. Sometimes you need to know, good God Almighty, that somebody else been through it, going through it, and got out of it. And that's what God said. It's not common. It's, com it's, it's such as common to man. But with every temptation, he's going to make a way for you to escape. That's why he said, I won't put more on you than you can bear. Now, let me flip the script on some of y'all. Sometimes what you're trying to bear, God didn't put it on you. You did it in your own likeness. You did it in your own flesh. So you can't ask God to bear what he didn't put on you. Hello? He said, I won't put more on you than you can bear. But sometimes we take on more than we can bear that God didn't have nothing to do with. Oh God, I feel like, I feel like running. I, I, I feel like really preaching tonight. You know, I, it, it ain't nobody here but me and a couple of workers. But I, I, listen, sometimes we take on stuff and we say it's God. Everything you take on, don't try to act like it's God. Some things we take on with our own flesh. Everybody ain't your assignment. Everything ain't your assignment. Everything, it's no way that everything is your calling. Hello, somebody. It's no way that you got to be involved in every auxiliary. It's no way. There are some things that you put yourself in. But God said, whatever he gives you, he'll give you the strength to bear it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, let me go to Luke chapter 3, verse 5. Luke chapter 3. Verse 5, I'm not going to trouble you long tonight. Luke chapter 3, verse 5. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth. When God is in the midst, it don't matter how high the mountain is. See, we, we want strength to climb the mountain but God said the high mountain is going to be made low oh God I, I, I wish I had somebody here the high mountain will be we want the strength to, the strength to go through the crooked places and hit every crook and crooked place but he said the crooked place the crooked way will be made straight so which tells me that whatever's ahead of me I ain't got to worry about it. God going to bring it down to my level so I can handle it. Ooh, ooh, Lord, I love you. I said God is going to bring it down to my level so I can handle it. That's why some of us are living where we live, driving what we drive, wearing what we wear. You know you probably couldn't even handle it, but God brought it to your level. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, I'll make the high mountains and I'll bring them low. I'll make the crooked way and I'll make it straight. The rough ways, I'll make it smooth. I want to prophesy to about 20 folks that are watching me right now in Brooklyn, in Queens, in the Bronx, in North Carolina, wherever you at, in Long Island, in New Jersey. I want to prophesy to you, God is getting ready to smooth this thing out for you. God is getting ready to smooth it out for you. It's been rough, it's been hard, and you about to give up, but God, you right at the brink. God is getting ready to smooth this thing out. I know it's been hard. You've been going crooked, been going up, been going down, been trying to climb the mountain, been trying to go low in the valley, been trying to go through the crooked places. But God is getting ready to make the crooked way straight. He's getting ready to make that rough road, that rough patch of road, he's getting ready to smooth it over for you. And I, I remember I used to have 
uh, 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 some 24 inch rims on my Chrysler 300, my old Chrysler 300. I called it the Silver Fox. I had 24 inch rims on it and I, I, I would dread uh, driving in Brooklyn on Atlantic Avenue or on Eastern Parkway, even Fulton Street, because the roads were so full of potholes and so rough. I had to focus so hard on just not hitting it because the roads were so rough, I, I would have a headache just trying to get to my next destination because I got to swerve this way. I got to swerve that way. I got to do all this. But then on them same 24 inch rims that I had on that car, I drove down to a road in Long Island and it was in, I was out there in Suffolk County and, and I'm, my mind is just, oh, I got to be careful with my rims. But the road was so smooth. And it didn't have no potholes. I guess they had good taxpayers out there. I don't know. It, and they didn't have no potholes. So I was able to sit back, relax, and cruise. I didn't have to worry about hitting the potholes, about the rough road hindering my, my way on getting where to my destination. But the road was smooth. And when, when you're on a smooth road and you ain't got to worry, you can put it on cruise control. And you can sit back and relax and enjoy the ride. I'm telling you right now God is getting ready to make these rough crooked places smooth and straight you've been stressed out God Almighty I love you Lord you've been stressed out you've been about to throw in the towel but God said he about to make it smooth and he gonna put you on cruise control anybody ready to get on cruise control you tired of grinding so hard you tired of uh, watching out for the the, 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 the no goods and the, and the roughness you ready to get on smooth road oh smooth road is coming you about to be on cruise control listen let me go to Isaiah yes God Isaiah and this is Bible study we must know that Isaiah is one of the great prophets of the Bible amen hallelujah Isaiah chapter 43 God, I love you. I'm, re I'm ready for the smooth road. I'm ready. Anybody tired of living check to check? Hallelujah. Anybody, anybody tired, tired of uh, 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 struggling every day and, 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 and you, 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 you just in a, in a constant struggle? Listen, I want you to share this with somebody. Somebody needs this word tonight. Because this, there are millionaires that are jumping out of high-rise buildings because they can't handle it. There are millionaires that are taking guns to their head because they can't handle it. There are millionaires that are driving their cars into lakes because they cannot handle it. But I'm telling you right now, child of God, you can handle it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 15 and 16 Isaiah 43 verse 15 and 16 it reads like this I am the Lord your holy one the creator of Israel your king he letting you know who he is verse 16 thus saith the Lord which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters you got to always remember when you are seems like you're at a dead end seems like you hit a brick wall oh I know I'm talking to somebody seems like you can't get through you can't get over hallelujah let me grab that seems like you just can't get over the hump and and there are gonna be some times in your life where you are going to go into, it look like you in a dead end. That's when you got to remember that you serve the God that makes a way out of no way. Woo. I said you serve a God that makes a way out of no way. And just when you think you can't handle it, just when you think you're at the end of your rope, just when you think God is not going to open the door because it ain't even a door there, God will create a door. He is the same God that created a pathway in the sea. Can you imagine? Just think back. 
And imagine the children of Israel when they walk up to that sea and they say, hey, there ain't no door here. Ain't no pathway here. There, there, there's no uh, uh, alley for me to go through. There's no ship to get us through the other side. And we serve that same God from then we serve today that will make a way in the sea. Woo! You got to have that crazy faith that whatever you're walking into, God is on the other side saying, come on. You got to be able to trust that this right here, God has you. When you can look over and see God saying, come on. Oh, I, I, I want to encourage somebody. God is telling you, come on. You can make it. Come on. You can make it. All you got to do is keep walking. And while you're walking, he's making ways financially spiritually oh god i love you even in your physical body some of us are so tired in our physical body seem like we can't get rest seem like the rest that we get we still not resting we go to bed tired we wake up tired we sleepy all day long i'm gonna pray that god give you rest tonight because part of you not resting is you're worrying oh god uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're worrying. I'm talking to you. You are worrying so much because even when you go to sleep, your mind is constantly going because you don't know if you're going to make it. The man of God is telling you tonight that you can make it. Yes, Lord. God, I love you. We serve the God that makes a way in the middle of the sea, He makes a pathway through the waters hallelujah he makes a pathway right through the waters yes he does listen I want to go to Isaiah chapter 41 verse 13 oh lord and if you ever want to encourage yourself I know we read the Psalms and things, but you want encouragement, read the book of Isaiah. See what God is saying through the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 41 and 13. And it says this, For I, the Lord, thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Listen to me. I, the Lord, thy God, will hold thy right hand. When I was a kid, let me tell you a, a, a story. Um, we, I grew up in East New York, lived on Colzine Avenue. Anybody familiar with Colzine Avenue? You know that the Fairfield uh, townhouses are right here. Directly across the street is PS306. That was the public school that me and all my brothers went to. And as a child, I remember in kindergarten, I was not allowed to cross the street by myself. And I was scared. I was literally, and, 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 and some of y'all been there, I was literally scared to cross the street by myself. I would stand at the edge of the street and would never go in there. I never crossed the street until I was by myself until I was about 9, 10. But when my father would hold my hand and walk me across the street, all of the fear left me. Oh, y'all don't hear me. All of the fear left out of me because this big six foot two and a half, 320 pound man loves me and he ain't going to let nothing happen to me. And he holding my hand. I'm just up there holding his hand. Just, I'm not even looking at what's ahead of me. I'm not even looking at the street, the cars. I'm just looking at my daddy holding my hand. Because wherever he leading me, I'm good. This is God saying, I will hold you by your right hand. That means God is getting ready to help you cross some of these streets. Whew. Y'all don't hear me. I wish somebody would give God praise in your house right now. God 
is getting ready to help you cross into your next doctor's appointment. You, I know you're a little fearful, but guess what? God got you by the right hand. God is getting ready to walk you in to your next job interview. I know you're a little bit fearful. I know you're a little bit nervous, but when you're holding on to God's hand, Good God Almighty, I don't got nobody here. When you're holding on to God's hand, all of the fear leaves. God is getting ready to hold somebody's hand when they're getting ready to go look at another new house. And that loan officer trying to be funny with you. God is going to hold your hand in the courtroom. God is going to hold your hand in the emergency room. And can I tell you this? That's why I'm not scared about what's going on in the atmosphere. Because I got a feeling that God is holding me by the right hand. And whatever I'm walking into, I'm not scared because God got me. And if God got me by my right hand, I know I can make it. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody give God praise. There's a praise that goes right there. I know you're watching virtually, but lift your hand and say, God, I thank you for having me. See, we ain't used to folks having us. Some folks have handled us wrong, and they mishandled us, and they let our hand go, and they let us go into the street and get hit. But God said, I am holding your hand. I'm not going to let you go. And I thank God. A praise goes right there. Somebody give God glory in your house. Give God glory in the living room, in the kitchen, in the bedroom. You on your job. Give God praise because he said, I got you by your right hand. Yes, God. Hallelujah. 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 Sister Moody, God got you by your right hand. He knew everything that you were going to be going through. He knew that everything you're going to suffer through. But you went through it. And the only reason you're still making it is because he got you by your hand. Can you imagine where we would be if we didn't have God holding us by our hand? Can you imagine trying to go through what you went through without God? Oh, Lord have mercy. 13, 14 years ago, when my mom and dad and my nephew was in that car accident, God had grabbed me by my hand. And if he didn't hold me by my hand, I would have lost my mind. I would have lost my life. I would have lost my everything. But I'm so glad he held me by my hand. And he's still holding me now. Even through this renovation project, he's holding my hand. Even when the finances ain't there, He's holding my hand and I know that I'm going to make it. Come on, I want you to look at somebody and type it in the screen and say, you can make it. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come what may. I'm still going to tell you yes. Hallelujah. 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 Good God Almighty, I, I, I feel something happening in the sanctuary. I know I'm by myself, but I feel the Lord moving in this place because he's holding my hand. Somebody needs to know that he's holding your hand. And if you know he's holding your hand, you can't commit suicide. If you know he's holding your hand, you can't jump out the window. If you know he's holding your hand, you can't put a gun to your head and pull the trigger. Because when God is holding your hand, you can have the gun, but it won't pull. You can have the pills, but it won't kill you. You can go to the ledge, but you won't jump. Because he's snatching you back. I'll tell you right now, God is snatching somebody back right now. Get out the way of that car. Get out the way of that thug. Get out the way of that trial. He's snatching you back. Woo! Yes, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I got to hurry on. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory. He's holding my hand. He's holding my hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. Woo! 
Yes, God. I'm trying to keep myself together, y'all. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to contain myself. But I don't need a crowd of folks to give God glory. All I need is a memory to think back of what I would be if he didn't hold, hold me by my hand. Where would I be? Woo! First Timothy chapter 1 verse 12. Yes, God. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. God has enabled me and counted me faithful. When somebody enables you, he says, you can handle it. You can do it. God is not disabling you. He is enabling you. That means he's given you already the ability to do what he called you to do. Some of us, yeah, in ministry. I'm talking to those that are in ministry. This ain't for everybody, but these are for those that are in ministry. And guess what? Your family can be your ministry. Some of us that are in ministry, ministry can take a toll on you. Ministry can make you throw in a towel. Ministry can make you give up. But I want to tell you tonight on this Tuesday night that God has enabled you for whatever ministry he has called you into. If he called you to it, he's going to equip you for it. If he called you to it, he's going to enable you to do it. God won't call nobody without enabling them. Yeah. And, 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 and you may not think that you're able. And a lot of times, let me talk to you. I, I, I'm talking right to you. You know who I'm talking to. A lot of times, we won't go forward in ministry because we don't think we're able we don't think, sometimes we don't even think we're worthy. And I tell you the truth, none of us are worthy. But when you don't think you're able, you're perfect for God. Because God wants you to depend clearly on him. And he has enabled you. And you got to stop telling God, no, you can't do this. No, you can't do that. When God said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So stop telling God, no, what you can't do. He's enabled you to do it. Oh, Lord, I can't do that. I can't do that. Who You offend God. Yes, Lord. Yeah, I'm talking to you. You offend God when you tell him what you cannot do. And he has already enabled you to do it. And if he's enabled you to do it, you, you are just about uh, uh, under a requirement to do it. You are under a requirement to do it. And you can make it. Some of us get so discouraged in ministry because we don't think we're able. You are able. God enabled you. Don't look for man to enable you. Man may uh, lay hands on you. Man may uh, uh, give you a title. But it is God that enables you to do. And if God enables you to do it, then you won't fail. Yeah. You won't fail. I, I, I got to give you one more scripture and I got, I got to go. Uh, I don't want to tarry too long. I want to give you one more scripture. Yes, Lord. Second Chronicles. Woo, I love the Lord. Second Chronicles. Chapter 15, verse 7. Second Chronicles. Chapter 15, verse 7. It says this. But as... For you, be strong and courageous, for your work will be rewarded. 
Oh, I wasn't going to leave you stranded tonight. Listen, I'm going to read it again for you. But as for you, talking about you, that's thinking about giving up, <clears throat> that's thinking that you cannot make it, let me talk to you. Be strong and courageous for your work will be rewarded. And I know it's a lot on you. I know it seems like everybody is passing you by. It seems like all that you do, nobody sees it. And it seems like you pushing and pushing and you can't make it. You can't make it. You can't make it. You can't do it. You keep falling short in your mind. But I'm telling you right now, the word of God came to tell you that all of your work not maybe, not it might be, but all of your work will be rewarded. And when God rewards you, nothing man can do about it. When God rewards you, people will be jealous, people will be envious, but it will not stop God from rewarding you. I'm not talking about God blessing you because we are all blessed. Come on. You woke up this morning, so you're blessed. Amen. You're in your right mind, so you're blessed. But there's a reward that people get that folks that are just ordinarily blessed don't get. There is a reward for those of us that are doing the work. Oh, hallelujah. I wish I had somebody. You see, everybody does not get rewarded. Everybody does not get a reward because everybody is not staying true to the word. That's why he said, for you, be strong, be courageous, for your work will be rewarded. I'm not just talking about your blessing. You can give your tithe and offering and be blessed, but these are rewards that come from your work. Doing what God says do. Doing what thus saith the Lord. Not giving up on the assignment. Not throwing in the towel. God told me to tell you tonight that your work will be rewarded. That means whatever you've been asking God to do, he going to do that exceedingly and abundantly above all you ask or think. Because him just doing that is a blessing. But him doing abundantly above all is a reward. God, I wish I had somebody. I feel like running around this stage. I feel like running all around. See, when he does your regular blessing, if he just does what you ask him, that's your blessing. But when he does exceedingly and abundantly above all, that's a reward. Woo! Because I remember as a kid when my mom, she would make, make certain meals and different things and, and we all ate. We all ate, but because I stayed up and I did the dishes, my mother had some chocolate pudding laid aside. She said, well, everybody ate, but I ain't going to tell them about this. Here, I'm going to give you this pudding. Here, take this chocolate pudding. This is your reward. Ooh. See, if we just didn't look at the blessing, but behind the blessing is the reward if you do the work. Behind the blessing is the reward. And I'm not just looking for the blessing anymore. But I'm looking for the reward. I wish I had somebody to give God praise right there. I'm looking for the reward. Yes, God. Some of us are doing some extra. Some of us are doing what God desired us to do. And you got a reward coming. Listen, I want to pray for you tonight. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you tonight. Because I, I truly believe that there's some miracles that are coming your way. There's some rewards coming your way. I don't want you to get to the point in your life when you're so tired and you're so ready to give up. No. I'm going to pray that God strengthen you for the journey. I'm going to pray that God make the crooked way straight. That he make the rough road 
smooth. I want you to grab, I don't know if you, if you can get somebody, if you can make contact with somebody in your house. It might just be you. It might just be you. I just want you to uh, just zone in for a little while for this prayer. Father God, I pray right now that you strengthen us for this journey. We were getting ready to give up. Life has been beating us down. There's been so much going on in our lives. There's been so much going on in our families. Even in our extended families. Seems like there's so much on us. So much on our shoulders. But God, we can't make it without you. So I pray right now, God, that you strengthen us. Strengthen that sister right there. Strengthen that brother right there. Give them the strength to let them know that they will make it. Let them know, God. Wrap your arms around them and tell them you didn't put more on them than they can bear. Grab them by their right hand and tell them, I'm with you always. God, we thank you because you said in your word that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. So we thank you right now for strength for the journey. We thank you right now for perseverance. We thank you for your Holy Ghost. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for what you put in us that won't allow us to give up. And we give your name the glory, praise, and honor. And we're looking for the reward. God, give us rewards for our work. Don't let our work and our labor be in vain. But reward us just as you said in your word. And it is so. And it is so. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. I want you to give God praise in your house. In your room. I, I, I know it's a little awkward because we're not in the sanctuary. I am but you're, you're home. Just say God I thank you. God I love you. God I worship you. Yes Lord. I believe it. Woo! Somebody got a miracle coming your way. Listen. I want you to sow a seed. I want you to sow a seed. The giving information is on the bottom there. Some of us are able to sow a $50 seed tonight into this word. And I want you to know that every seed that you're giving, and uh, I know we want to bless the man of God. When you bless me, I'm giving it right to the church. My mind is made up. I know folks said, Pastor, no, no, no. This is for you. Listen, when you bless me, I'm giving it right to this. Because I want to see the work of the Lord finish. God is already taking good care of me. He's taking good care of my family. Amen. I want you to sow that seed. The cash app is dollar sign new grace tab. Dollar sign new grace tab. And also the Zell is Pastor Dave 14 at gmail.com. That is also the PayPal. The PayPal is Pastor Dave. 14 at gmail.com but that's how you can give and sow into this ministry again that cash app is dollar sign new grace tab and some of us may not have a $50 seat to sow you may have a $20 seat or a $10 seat even a $5 seat let the Lord lead you in your giving tonight sow a seed into the ministry and I you, you know I, t I tell you this, you're already blessed, but there's a reward coming. Sow a seed into this great ministry where you see what God is doing in this house. God is working it out in this house. We're beautifying God's house for his glory. Not for my glory, but for his glory. Amen. 
Thank you so much for tuning in to Bible study. Amen. Tomorrow night, Life Impact Worship Center, Word on Wednesday. We will be in person worship in New Jersey, 20 East Houghton Road, Berlin, New Jersey. If you know anybody in the South Jersey area that's looking for a place to worship God, come on to Life Impact Worship Center. Friday night, we will be here in the sanctuary at Grace Tabernacle. If you see me right now, I don't have a jacket on. I don't see my breath in the atmosphere. It's nice and warm in Grace Tabernacle. Amen. I did a little bit of shoveling today. It's cleared off the stairs. All is well. So service will go on on Friday night. Pastor Patina Pennon will be our guest speaker. Amen. So we're excited about that. And then we'll be coming back on the first Sunday to give God more glory, praise, and honor with our communion, holy communion service. I'm going to see you there, and I want you to know that there's a miracle on its way to your house. God bless you all. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you. We getting ready to go. God bless you. If you're traveling, travel safe. I'm telling you, the wind of God is in your house right now. The wind of God is in your house right now. Praise Him for the reward. Woo!